Before we start today's video, a big thank you to today's sponsor, Wicked Clothes. Wicked Clothes are one of my favourite clothing brands, and I know the majority of you will like what they do. Their clothes are high quality, and they have so many great designs to choose from. They have recently released these shirts here, which will be perfect for the beach when they get back to Australia. They also have these designs here for true crime enjoyers, which I know many of you are. So go ahead and click the link in the description or pinned in the comments. Right now, there are plenty of items on sale, so you can go and pick up some bargains, and if you see anything you like, use the coupon code DISTURBAN for an extra 10% off your basket. And now, onto the video. This case takes place in London in 2017, but the story begins in France. Sophie Lyonnais was a 20-year-old woman from a small rural town in France. She was described as a rather shy and reserved person, and was known to sometimes be a little naive. Sophie wanted to work with children. When she left school, she enrolled on a course to study childcare. Not too long after passing this course, Sophie was given an opportunity to work as an au pair in London. An au pair is a person who cares for the children of a family in return for a room and board. Sophie saw this as a great opportunity to learn English and to get some experience in working with children. After some consideration, Sophie took up the offer. The family she would be living with suited her very well. The couple were both French nationals who lived in London, and she would be looking after the mother's two children. The mother was a 35-year-old woman named Sabrina Kuida, and her partner was 40-year-old Sam Maduni. On the outside, the couple seemed successful. Sam was a financial analyst, and Sabrina was a fashion designer. But in reality, they had a strange and turbulent relationship. The couple met in 2001, but were very on and off. Sam was known to go off for months at a time. The people in the local area in which they lived did not know a great deal about the couple. They were known to keep to themselves, and they weren't very sociable. In April of 2015, Sophie went to London to complete a two-week trial period with the family. The two young boys loved Sophie, and she got along with the couple very well. She was offered the job, to which she accepted. Just after Sophie turned 20, she moved to London in January of 2016, and she became the family's au pair. The home in which Sophie lived was a small two-bedroom garden flat, so Sophie would sleep in the same bedroom as the two boys, who at the time were aged 8 and 4. Sophie stayed in touch with her parents, and at first, she absolutely loved her new job. Sabrina and Sophie got along very well. Sabrina was also a makeup artist, and would give Sophie little makeovers from time to time. But then, as the months went by, something changed. Many people who had interacted with Sophie in the local area, or had served her in the local shops, saw that she seemed happy in the first couple of months. But slowly, as time went on, she began to deteriorate. She seemed to become increasingly unhappy. And the reason for this was truly strange. Sophie's deterioration was all at the hands of Sabrina and Sam. Sabrina had a rather bizarre obsession with one of her ex-boyfriends, a man named Mark Walton. Mark was one of the original members of the boy band Boyzone. Before being dropped by the other members, he went on to have a very successful career in the music business. Sabrina and Mark were together from 2011 to 2013. The two had a very turbulent relationship, and Mark would later say that she was an extremely volatile person that was prone to random violent outbursts. The two of them eventually broke up. Following this split, Mark continued to help Sabrina financially, and paid for the rent on her flat for a couple of months. But once Mark stopped, Sabrina flipped. She began accusing Mark of horrendous things. She accused Mark of doing explicit things to his cat, despite the fact he didn't even own a cat. She accused him of trying to stalk her and trying to hurt her and her family. And not only that, she said that Mark was using black magic on her too. All of these accusations that Sabrina pinned on Mark were totally fabricated. She attempted and intended on destroying his life. 
Over the next couple of years, until the year 2015, Sabrina filed over 30 reports attempting to smear Mark's name and reputation. The police eventually gave Sabrina a caution for her lies and slander. And shortly after all of this happening, Sophie would arrive in London and begin her work for Sam and Sabrina. A few months into Sophie working with the family, Sabrina's paranoia and obsession for Mark Walton intensified. She convinced herself that Sophie and Mark knew each other, and that the two of them had an evil secret plan to destroy Sabrina and her family's life. When in fact, Sophie had no idea who Mark was. But this didn't matter. Sabrina firmly believed this to be true. She would interrogate Sophie, demanding to know the truth. And of course, Sophie would deny this, as she genuinely had no idea who Mark was. This made Sabrina furious, as she believed Sophie was lying to her. Sabrina knew that Sophie was very timid and shy, and she used this to her advantage. She would continue to accuse Sophie of secretly working for Mark, and began to lash out and strike her. When Sabrina would hit Sophie, Sam would just look the other way. But after some time, he too began to believe these fantasies and joined in. The couple would interrogate Sophie together, demanding that she confess to colluding with Mark. The two of them would beat her, shout at her, and make threats that she would be going to jail for a long time. Most of these interrogations were recorded on Sabrina's mobile phone, and this happened for months. And then, Sabrina told Sophie that she would no longer be paying her as she didn't have the money. Despite not being able to pay Sophie, Sabrina would still force her to work over 80 hours per week. Sabrina would also withhold food from Sophie, resulting in her losing a considerable amount of weight. Around 16 months into living with the family, Sophie made a call to her mother and told her that she needed to come home as soon as possible. Sophie's mother transferred her the money she would need to purchase a plane ticket back to France. But shortly after this conversation, Sophie's mother received a call from Sabrina, telling her that Sophie had stolen a diamond ring that belonged to her, and that Sophie would not be allowed to leave until the matter was solved. Sophie would sometimes go to a local fish and chip shop alone. The owner of this restaurant would later say that he could tell that something was not quite right. He said, Sophie was always very quiet. Her body language showed that something was wrong. There were many times when she had tears in her eyes. There was one time when I asked what was wrong and she told me that Sabrina had beaten her. I asked why and she said that she had dropped some butter on the ground. On the 20th of September 2017, the fire services received a call from a member of the public. This person was calling about some thick black smoke that was coming from Sabrina and Sam's garden. They told the operator that the fire had been burning for over three hours and that it was giving off a foul smell. The fire services arrived on the scene and were welcomed to the garden of the flat. In the garden, they found Sabrina and Sam cooking chicken on the barbecue, while the bonfire was raging next to them. The firefighters extinguished the flames from the bonfire, but once the flames were out, they noticed something strange in the ashes. The firefighters turned to the couple and asked them what they were burning. Sam just told them that he had put the remains of a sheep's carcass that he had cut up onto the fire, but the firefighters were not too convinced. One of them spotted what seemed to be a pair of glasses and some clothes, and then they found what looked like a human nose and human fingers. Sam and Sabrina were burning the body of Sophie. Sam continued to try and tell the firefighters that the remains were that of a sheep, but they obviously knew he was lying. The police were called and the couple were arrested. A post-mortem was carried out on the remains found in the fire, and they were able to positively identify the body as Sophie. Her body was too badly burned to give a definitive answer as to how she died. However, her lungs were inflated, which is a sign that she could have drowned. Sophie also had four broken ribs, a broken jawbone, and a broken sternum. It was clear that she had been subject to some horrific violence. On the 5th of January 2018, Sam finally gave a statement to the police. 
He told them that Sophie had accidentally drowned while he was interrogating her about her involvement with Mark Walton. He explained that Sophie would be forced to sit in a bath and answer questions about him, and that he and Sabrina both believed that Mark and Sophie were working to destroy their lives. If Sophie did not give a satisfactory answer, her head would be forced under the water. Sam said that during one of these interrogations, he punched Sophie in the face, rendering her unconscious, and that her head slipped under the water. He said once this happened, he pulled her out and tried to revive her to no avail, and that after accidentally killing her, he put her body into a suitcase, and then both he and Sabrina burned her body in the garden. Following this confession, Sam tried to enter a plea for manslaughter. This plea was rejected. Sam then heard that Sabrina had pinned all wrongdoing on him, essentially trying to rid herself of all responsibility. Sabrina claimed that she had been asleep and awoke to find Sophie dead at the hands of Sam. And so, on the 15th of March 2018, he told the investigators that his first story was untrue, and that he had only given this statement to protect Sabrina. He now claimed that he had gone to bed on the 18th of September and was awakened by the sound of Sabrina repeatedly saying, What have I done? He got up, entered the bathroom to see Sophie in the bath no longer breathing. After the CPR failed, they placed Sophie inside a suitcase and hid her in the house. When the children asked where Sophie was the next day, they told them that she had gone back to France. A couple of days later, they burned the body. Both Sabrina and Sam both claimed to be asleep when Sophie was killed, although they did both admit they burned Sophie's body together. Sam told the investigators that he had witnessed Sabrina attack Sophie on multiple occasions, but that he was never a part of it. He recalled one particular instance, when on the 13th of September, Sabrina had beaten Sophie and also used an electric cable to whip her. The attack had been so brutal that Sophie could not even walk properly afterwards. Sam told the police that he should have done more for Sophie, and that he could have gotten her the proper help she needed and gotten her home. Sam said that he wanted to protect Sabrina, which is why he did not call the police when he discovered her body. During the investigation, the police discovered 18 recordings on the couple's mobile phones. The audio recordings were of the couple interrogating Sophie and the police stated that in the background, you could hear the sound of Sophie being slapped and punched. In one of these recordings, Sabrina made a very strange statement. She told Sophie that if she would tell the truth, she would protect her, and she would get Mark, kill him, and eat him raw in front of her. A video was taken right before Sophie would be killed, in which she confesses. Sabrina had told Sophie that if she was to confess, she would be allowed to go home. On screen now is a snapshot from that video, and as you can see, Sophie looks incredibly malnourished and broken. Shortly after this video was taken, Sophie would be killed. A note was found in the house that was written by Sophie. It read, Why me? I need to stop them. The police tried to locate Sophie's passport, but they were unable to find it. They believe the couple had taken it from Sophie and burned it to keep her under their control. They were also able to conclude that Sophie was not allowed to leave the house in the final 12 days before she died. The trial would begin at the end of March 2018 and it lasted for two months. The court heard the recordings and how Sophie was attacked, interrogated and psychologically abused by the couple. Mark Walton also attended the trial, and he gave a witness statement. He told the court that Sabrina was unpredictable, and that she could turn very nasty very quickly, often over something trivial. An unnamed key witness also came forward. They said they had overheard Sophie's screams and heard the sound of water splashing as Sabrina and Sam attacked her in the bathroom of their home. The witness said he kept hearing Sophie go under the water and that Sam and Sabrina would then say, breathe. During the trial, Sabrina read a letter of apology, which goes as follows. Dear Sophie, may peace be with you. First of all, I wish everyone including Sophie, especially her parents and family who are suffering badly to know how deeply sorry I am for what happened to Sophie. 
We shared many good times together as well as pains until things went terribly wrong and it ended up in this horrendous tragedy. I think of you every day and I am shocked and sad that you are no longer part of this world. It feels like a horrible dream to me that I wish I could just wake up from. Every day I live with sadness and sorrow. I am suffering every day thinking of you and what happened to you that dreadful night. I only wish I could turn back the clocks so that this never happened to you and you would still be alive with us today. I will now live without hope and I can't ever imagine being happy ever again. I struggle every day and I'm very disappointed in myself. Sophie, I wish things could have been different and I hope that you rest in peace with God. With deepest regret, Sabrina. I'm guessing many of you noticed the self-pity in those words. Many people present in the trial stated that the two showed little to no remorse. The jury found the couple guilty of murdering Sophie. Upon being sentenced, Sabrina sobbed. The two of them were sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 30 years. I understand that many people may be confused as to why Sophie didn't just leave. But when someone is constantly gaslit, attacked, threatened and tortured psychologically and physically for a prolonged period of time, it's not just as simple as leaving. In the recordings, the couple told Sophie that she would be going to jail for 40 years for what they claimed she did. So it's likely that she was too scared to even go to the police. She was alone in a foreign country, she couldn't speak the native language very well, had no money and they had taken her passport. Following the sentencing, Sophie's mother made a statement addressed to Sabrina and Sam. She said, They broke her until she could no longer fight. No God will ever forgive you for what you have done to my daughter. You are both equally evil as one another. Sophie's father also made a truly heartbreaking statement, in which he said, I will never hear Sophie say to me, Dad, I'm getting married. Or Dad, I'm going to have a baby.